Hi everyone and welcome to my sewing room. As you can see my sewing room has changed a little bit. I've got my dolls back out again on the shelf. Christmas is down and I've actually put some of my more basic sewing machines out here on the shelf that usually has my big embroidery machine. I have touched a little bit on learning to use your sewing machine on this channel, but I've really never gotten into the real mechanical sewing machines, the basic ones, the ones that don't have automatic tension. So I thought I would touch on that just a little bit. So if you have a really basic sewing machine and you want to learn a little bit about care and maintenance and maybe how to set some of the dials, don't go away because we're going to address that. My name is Rosemary and this is Enchanting Rosemary. Mary sewing and embroidery. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to talk to you about is the bobbin case on your mechanical sewing machine. Most of them look pretty much the same. This one is from my 1500 straight stitch machine and the only real difference is that it has um, a little bit flatter bobbin. It's not as full as, a, as what they call a class 15 bobbin but um, for the most part they're all pretty much the same. If they have a whole lot of holes in them that's just a different way to make a class 15 metal bobbin. If your machine has a bobbin case that looks like this and it comes with plastic bobbins more than likely that's just something that they put in the newer machines and you can put metal in them but remember that if you put metal in them stick with metal don't go from plastic to metal to plastic to metal you're actually going to mess up your sewing machine your tensions are going to get confused and you're going to have problems so stick with one or the other if you have a drop-in bobbin like on some of my previous videos stick with plastic because the drop-in bobbins have to have plastic the ones that fit in and go into the side are going to take with a metal bobbin case are going to take metal bobbins so make sure you do that so the other thing is that when you put your um i'm going to see if i can center this so you can see it when you put your bobbin into your bobbin case and you were looking straight at it you have it turned this way and you're looking straight at it it should turn clockwise so let me I'm gonna turn it around so that I can see what the heck I'm doing I'm gonna put it in here and pull on the thread okay so this one is turning clockwise in the bobbin case that's the way it's supposed to turn and then you take it let's get a hold of this thread And you pull it down into your tensions and it pulls over to the side like that and one of the ways over the years that I've learned how this works is if your bobbin case turns clockwise then your thread pulls to the right so you just get to a point where you know which ones are which and in a minute we're going to go to the featherweight and the featherweight actually turns the opposite direction but almost any of those especially if you have like an old Kenmore or Montgomery Wards or um, even some of the singers they're gonna they're gonna turn clockwise in the bobbin case you should be able to hold the bobbin case like this without it falling if it falls then you're you've got a tension issue but you should also be able to pull on it pretty easily there is a little screw that's right here in the front and I'm sorry this is blurry I don't know why I'm gonna have to learn a little bit more about camera work but um, there's a little screw right here in the front and you can nudge it to the left or to the right lefty loosey righty tighty is the general rule um, and tighten it and loosen it and get it right but if you're uncomfortable with that don't do it because I'll be honest with you that little screw comes out and falls on the floor you're done you gotta buy a new bobbin case and it doesn't work very good um, so when I hold the, this little door open like this the bobbin will not come out but I have to tell you that if you hold it like this and go ahead and put it in your sewing machine without holding the door open flip this up so I can see what the heck I'm doing
and give it a little push. See the way that clicked? That was the noise you want to hear. You want to make sure it clicks into place and there's a little button that pops out. I'm going to show you in a picture on one of my other sewing machines what that button looks like when it pops out. I don't want to get into this one because this is an old machine. It's not very pretty in there. Um, <laughs> that's the absolute, <coughs> the absolutely honest truth about it. But anyway, so you want to make sure you get your bobbin case in there and you want to make sure the bobbin is turning the right direction when you start to sew. It makes a million times difference in the way your sewing machine works. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to my featherweight and we're going to talk a little bit about the featherweight. Okay, so this is my featherweight sewing machine. It was given to me as a gift from some of the ladies I used to work with in San Diego. So I have to kind of say hi to them. Hi, Debbie. Hi, Peggy. Hi, Deanna. Thank you so much for my featherweight. It was kind of like a, give, a going away gift. Um, if you are lucky enough to have one of these machines, you are very lucky indeed. I've met ladies over the years that I've been selling sewing machines who have one because they got it as a graduation present or they got it from their mom or they just learned how great they really are and went looking for one and found one and they're um, the authentic ones are a little bit hard to find especially if they're in really good condition they're great straight stitching sewing machines they just do just about everything um, no let me go back and say that again they're really good straight stitching sewing machines they don't really do anything they just straight stitch but their stitches are really um, beautiful they're great for quilters and they're very portable so you can put them in their little black box and you can carry them and take them to class so there's a lot of us out there who are sewers who want one or have one already I am going to try and turn this this way so that you can see the bobbin case area that's right here so the bobbin just pulls out like this and then you have um, a different it's a different bobbin it's it looks like a class 15 metal bobbin but it's flatter it's not very wide at all and um, it's bigger around so when you put it in this bobbin case um, it fits in there perfectly and you'll know immediately if you don't have the right bobbin for it or you go into a sewing store and tell them that you want to uh, a featherweight bobbin and they'll make sure you get the right one but this is one of those that's a, that breaks the rules because when you pull it down here here's your little tension part right here and you pull it through there it actually turns counterclockwise and that's the way it goes because it threads differently than most of the other ones so we want to hold the little door open so that it doesn't come out and then we're going to put it in to the bobbin case and we're going to make sure that it pops in and that the little dot comes out right here so that one is now in there the way it's supposed to be then i'm going to put the thread up here on top this is going to be really interesting me trying to do this without sitting behind it okay so it goes up here then it goes to this little part right here again my foot is up you never thread a sewing machine I don't care what kind of sewing machine it is you never thread it with the foot down um, and then you're going to put it around this part here and you're going to give it a good tug and it hits this little spring right here and then you pull on it and it clicks into place and then you pull it down like that and then it goes around here now see the way this says one two three four five six seven usually your tension is going to be four or five that's what you want it to be don't mess with this tension if you're getting bad tension leave it on four or five check your threading before you start playing with your tensions sometimes you do have to nudge it a little bit down towards four or nudge it a little bit up towards five but you usually don't want to change it also make sure the thread is between these two little discs because I've seen some of these machines where people get it way back here to the back back where it does not belong and then they're not getting good tension so you want to make sure you get it between the discs this is where you can change it a little bit then you're going to go up to your take up lever right here and come straight down and you're going to put it let me see it has a thread guide right here so I'm going to get it behind that thread guide now this machine threads from right to left the needle always goes in 
Um, so the flat back is to the left, as high as it'll go, and you tighten it. And then it threads from right to left. So I'm going to have to flip this around and put the thread. Obviously, I do not have this plugged in, and I have no light underneath it. So threading it would be a miracle. <laughs> I'm not even going to try it, but take my word for it. You always have to thread this machine. I'm going to turn it a little bit so it's, you always have to thread this machine um, from right to left, and it's just a little bit that's an exception to the rule, um, but it is a great little straight stitch sewing machine. Remember that you want to get, make sure you get your thread between the tension discs, and then put your foot down and tug and it should be nice and tight, so tight that you can barely pull on it. And that way you know that you've got it where you want it to be. So now let's go to a more modern sewing machine that's got a few more options to it. Okay, so this is the last sewing machine I want to talk to you about today, and it's a Janome. And I know I usually do things with Brothers, but this is a really nice basic machine. And if you have a basic Brothers sewing machine, the all of these stitches are pretty much the same on any entry-level mechanical sewing machine. I really like this Janome. It's not crazy expensive, and it's heavy. It's not plastic like some of them, where when you pick it up, you feel like you're picking up something that's empty. It's got metal in it. It's a heavy-duty sewing machine, and it's um, it's got recessed stitching on it right here. Um, I'm sorry, recessed threading on it right here. So it doesn't have the knob on the front like the singer and the brother had, um, but it does have the old fashioned bobbin case that's down in here that you see a lot on old mechanical sewing machines. So I wanted to talk a little bit about this machine, about the way you change the knobs and choose your, your length and your width. Uh, but I also want to show you how to take this bobbin case apart because this is very important that you know how to do that. So I'm going to turn the machine on its side and I'm going to show you basically how to take that apart and oil it. Okay, so this sewing machine is laying on its back and this is what they call, uh, well first let's take the bobbin out. So there's the bobbin case. This is what's called the hook and this is the race. So if you move these little levers that are right here, flip them up then this part here comes off so that one that part is there and I'm going to move the machine back a little bit so I can put it right there and then this part here comes out that's called the hook and the reason why it's called the hook whoops is that it has a very sharp point right here you can actually cut yourself on that ask me how I know that <laughs> um, so that's called the hook and then this part in here is where you're going to put some oil. And that's where it gets really, really dirty very easily. So you can take a paintbrush and you can brush that in there. The brushes they give you with your machine are not going to do the job. You need something stronger than that, something that's going to really clean it out really good. And don't be afraid to put some air in there. And blow it. It's not going to hurt your machine. It'll get all that fluff that's down in these little crevices that you can't find out of the way. And then when you take your machine in to have it serviced, the repair guys will get in there and clean all that stuff out for you. Now, we're going to put a little oil in here. And you want sewing machine oil. Not three-in-one. Not vegetable oil. You want not our... What is it called? I can't even think of the other one. Um, but this is sewing machine oil. And it comes in your sewing machine. You can also buy some at a sewing machine store. It's light and it evaporates, so it's not going to gum up your sewing machine. So I'm going to open this up. And I'm just going to put a little teeny tiny drop right here. You know what? I forgot to cut the tip off of this. But that's okay. We're going to put a drop here. And we're going to put a drop back here. And then once you put the drop in there, you can again use a paintbrush and, and brush it around. Then also you want to sew on it a little bit on a piece of scrap because a scrap piece of fabric, if you put your good fabric in there right after you oil your machine, you're going to be sorry. So just use a scrap piece of fabric and wipe everything down make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, so now we're going to put this back together. And... If I can zoom in on this, I'm going to try and zoom in on it a little bit so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. But there's a ridge right here. 
that this piece, well first, this piece kind of, I always look at it this way. This is half a circle. This is another half a circle. Put them opposite each other and make them um, complete the circle. But this kind of rests on that ridge. It doesn't snap. It just lays there in place. And you know that it's in there right because it, it lays nice and flat that way. Then this piece here has got two little, um, it's got a little nub right there. See that nub? And there's a place for it to fit in right there. So look for that little opening and make sure it falls right into there. These two little bumps here are up, not down. Make sure they're up. So this goes over that one. This goes over that one. And then we're going to turn the flywheel and make sure that it actually moves. So I'm going to move the camera again. Okay, we're going to try and do this so that you can see the sewing machine. This sewing machine doesn't have a whole lot of light. I'm trying to put some light on the outside of it so you can see a little bit better. Um, first, we're going to start out here on the top part. You will see that there are some school pins right here that come up and down. See the way those come up and down like that? Um, so you'd be surprised how many people come in to the store and don't know that these bow pins come up and down. So you want to make sure you pull them up and then you want to put your thread on top of that. Now this part right here, this is only for winding your bobbin. And when you wind your bobbin, you put it around here and then back over here to wind your bobbin. So you do not need to put thread around there. That's actually going to cause too much tension and you're not going to have good stitches. We're going to go around through there and then we're going to go straight down from here and i hold the thread and pull straight down like this to make sure it goes down and then i go around here now my foot is down i don't know if you can see that that tension that thread is not going between those tensions the way i want it to so i'm going to put my foot up i'm going to put my hold onto this top thread hold this pull straight down like this then i know it's getting between the tension discs you know, the very first time I ever bought a sewing machine with reversed, with recessed tension was probably in 1996. I'd had an old Montgomery Wards machine for years and years that had a knob on the front. And I didn't know why sometimes my machine would work and sometimes it wouldn't work. And nobody could tell me. And I bought the machine online like a dummy. Um, I think it was from a catalog company. Um, and they didn't know how to tell me what to do with it either. So. I am telling you, hold the thread on the top and on the bottom and floss it down so that it gets between those tension discs. And then go around the number two, go up here. Now my take-up lever is not showing here. So I'm going to turn my flywheel until it comes up. And then to get it to go into the take-up lever, it just did it for me now without me even trying. Um, I'm going to go all the way to the right, all the way to the back, all the way to the left, pull forward and it'll drop right down into that take up lever. Then I'm going to come straight down here and there's a t um, thread guide right here. I'm going to put it through that thread guide. And this one is a little close to the needle screw. So it's going to go in there like that. Now I'm going to do the needle threader. So at this point I can actually put the foot down and tug and it's tight. That's the way I want it to be really tight. So now I'm going to move the camera because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing with this um, needle threader. And it's hard because my fingers are going to get in the way. But this is your needle threader and it comes down and goes around the needle. If the needle's in the wrong place, if the needle's in the wrong place, sometimes some machines, it won't wrap around it. This one seems to be okay wherever I put it. So that's kind of good. But we want to make sure the needle's about center and then it wraps completely around the needle so that this little teeny tiny hook that's in here goes into the eye of the needle. Then we're going to put the thread under this hook here. And across and up the front of the needle. And then I can tell that something's got a hold of my thread. So now I'm going to very slowly pull it back and let go. Let go, because if you don't let go, you, it won't pull back. And now I have a loop there. So hopefully you saw that. I'm going to go ahead and pull it through. I've just threaded my sewing machine. So I'm going to lift the foot 
and put my thread under. Make sure you always put your thread to under and to the back. Um, oh wait, before I do that, I have to turn my filly wheel. So I'm gonna hold the thread here and I'm gonna reach across the camera here and turn my flywheel so that it goes all the way down and all the way back up. And once the needle comes all the way to the top, I can tug on this thread and this is my bobbin thread, this blue that just came up here. So my bobbin is on top and so, and my, my top thread is up and they're both together and I'm gonna put them both under the foot and to the back. Now I have a piece of fabric right here I'm gonna put right here. Now these are my dials on this machine and I confess there's thousands of models out there so it's really hard to show you what does what. But most of these machines that have three dials on the top like this, and I can think of a brother and a brunette and a few others that have the exact same thing, you're gonna put it on A because down here it says A is center needle position and that's what we want, center needle position. So we're gonna put it on A. This is gonna be my length of my stitch. Most of the time when you're sewing, two and a half is the length that you want it to be. This machine is completely manual, so you've got to set that yourself. This is the stitch width, which usually means the needle position. If I change the width, my needle moves back and forth. So I, this little emblem right here that shows a circle and a dot and a circle and a dot, it's showing you that at zero, the needle's over to the left. Is showing you that at five the needles in the center so I'm gonna put it on five so my needles in the center all of old sewing machines on a straight stitch if you change the width it would make a zigzag this machine does not work that way this one I have to put it on a C to make a zigzag so I'm going to keep it on a to do a straight stitch and then I'm going to push on my foot control and just start to sew and I'm going to get the stitch line that's about two and a half, which is usually what you want when you're doing um, just quilting or something. Now, in order to stop stitching, this thing, the needle stops wherever it wants to stop, wherever I stop pushing. And if I pick it up and try and take that out, I'm going to have probably three stitch, three threads. So I'm going to reach over here and I'm going to turn my flywheel towards me one full turn until... I see the take-up lever come up here to the highest place. Then I know that that stitch is complete and I can pull my thread and it pulls easily and I don't have three or four threads. I only have two, the top thread and the bottom thread. I'm going to bring it up here. I'm going to use the cutter and cut it off. So that, let me see if I can show you on the camera. That's a straight stitch and it's about two millimeters. I have it set at two and a half, so about two and a half millimeters. If I put this down and make it go all the way to four, then my stitch is going to be long. And that is the stitch that you use when this is a long stitch. That's the stitch that you use when you're going to baste or pull it out or you're gathering or something like that. You don't use that for a regular stitch. It's too long and it's not going to hold. So, but that's the way you change your stitch length. I can make it very, very, very short. I can bring it all the way down to less than one. And then it takes little teeny, teeny, tiny stitches. And you can do that for stay stitching. But remember, if you make a mistake with little teeny, tiny stitches, you're not going to want to rip it out. It's going to be a pain in the neck. So I wouldn't use little tiny stitches unless you absolutely needed to. Now, back up here to these dials, if I go to C, C says it's going to do a zigzag. So if I'm on C, then I've, I've got this on five, so it should do a wide zigzag. I still have my stitch length really short, so my zigzag is going to be really on top of itself. I'm going to move it this way a little bit. Now I'm going to get a wider, further away zigzag. See how well that works? Again, I'm going to turn my flywheel until I see the take-up lever all the way to the top. And that way I know that when I pull it out, it's going to let go. It's not going to be jammed. I'm going to have finished my stitch. And you can see I got a close together zigzag and then a far apart zigzag. See how well that worked? That is basically the way this machine works. Now, a lot of these machines that do this, 
you will notice that they usually have some stitches in red down here. These are what you call stretch stitches. They're made for stretchy fabrics. So up here, see where it says SS? If I turn this to the SS and it is red, it means it's going to do the red stitches. This A1 is a reinforcement. They call it a, a um, straight stretch stitch. And when you sew it, I'm going to try and do this slow. It goes front and back and front and back. It actually looks like the machine is doing something weird, but it's doing a reinforcement stitch. So I'm going to lift my foot and pull this out and cut it. And I'm going to show you that reinforcement stitch. See how thick that one is? That is something that you could put on something that you wanted to be really strong, like the seat of a pair of pants or under your arm or maybe even on lawn furniture. Instead of putting thick thread, just do that stitch and you will find that it's very, very, very strong and it's going to hold really well. Let me see if I can open this. It, it, I'd have to pull really, really hard to make that come up. It, and the same thing, it also is really, really hard to rip out. So don't do it unless you know you're doing it in the right place. Um, because if you're doing it on a, a stretchy fabric and you try and rip it out, you could put a hole in your fabric really easily. I could probably rip this one out, but I would, it wouldn't be fun. I wouldn't like it. So those are just like basic things that make this sewing machine do what it's supposed to do. Um, one more thing, I'm going to do one of these decorative stitches. I'm going to put this on I, so I'm going to dial I. There it is on I, and this is in the regular stitches, and it doesn't tell you here, it might tell you in the book, but whenever you do these close together zigzags, you need to be in the buttonhole. And as close to zero as you can get without actually being on zero, and then as wide as you can go. And then, let's see, turn the flywheel so it comes to the top, lift the foot and cut. And see all those little scallops I just made, aren't those fun? So this is a pretty basic little sewing machine, but it does do quite a bit of things. It also does an automatic buttonhole, which is very, very nice. Um, so hopefully that will help you a little bit if you have a brand new mechanical sewing machine that you got for Christmas and you'll be able to get so you know how to use it. If you okay, so that was just a little bit about some basic sewing machines that are out there. Hopefully I helped a little bit if you just got a brand new sewing machine for Christmas. If you'd like to see a little bit more on basic sewing machines and how to use them, please make a comment. I will try and put some more things in on the channel that have to do with basic sewing machines and computerized sewing machines and usage because I seem to I feel like there's a lot of people out there who are really enjoying learning a little bit about what makes a sewing machine tick. Um, I do want to get back to doing some of the software and I do want to do some things with the Luminaire because they just came out with an upgrade and there's lots of really cool stuff with that. So um, just keep making comments, like and subscribe, tell your friends um, and let me know if there's things that you would like to see me do on this channel. In the meantime, I hope you have a really great week and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.